Hey friend, it's me Vasco with a quick announcement. We at the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast are organizing this year's Scrum Master Summit. For tickets and details on the summit, check out the URL bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. All one word S-M-S-U-M-M-I-T 22. And now on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday Leading Change episode this week with Luis Silva. Hey, Luis, welcome back. Hi, thank you. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Absolutely. Happy Wednesday, everyone. The best day of the week, the change management or change leadership, as I like to call it, day of the week. So, Luis, let's dive into that story. Of course, we're talking about a story of change, a process you were involved with. And we want you to tell us the story of what happened, but also highlight for us the tips, the tricks, the techniques, and the tools you learned back then that you still apply today? This is a tough question because I think that the best answer I have for you is iteration reviews. And it sounds such a small topic. So I was asked uh, as an initiative to review how we do reviews. And because there was this big problem that no one really understood. First thing I did, and going back to the book uh, that was suggested, was actually to do a good discovery on the problem. And if you just think, okay, just create guidelines about reviews, it sounds a very straightforward topic. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I dove deep into it, and I did big discovery on it. And all of a sudden, I'm discovering that 50% of the teams are not actually doing reviews, but of whatever type, the ones that are doing are not asking for feedback most of the times, and they are based on slideware. And what seemed like a simple problem became a huge thing to solve. So something that I thought I would get solved within a week was all of a sudden this big initiative, because when you get these symptoms, you need to ask questions. So I'm asking, why aren't you guys doing reviews. And all of a sudden, I'm getting answers like stakeholders don't show up. Well, we don't have anything to show. And all of a sudden, I'm not working with iteration reviews or sprint reviews. I'm working with a global mindset change of the organization. And this involved listening to teams, listening to POs, building guidelines with the POs, but hearing from stakeholders as well. And changing behaviors on the teams. All of this while getting an extra request, which is make reviews scalable in a growing organization. This means setting them up for uh, offline consumption and async communication. So all of a sudden, I can only imagine what you thought when you got that extra requirement. It's like, okay, so this isn't working. We don't know why we need this. We don't know how to make them work, but now we need to make them better and scale. Yes, yes. And the thing is, once you know the problem as deep as I could understand it within the organization, because I ended up doing discovery with six levels of the organization in terms of stakeholders. For this, I listened to over 50 teams. I talked with over 20 POs to fully understand this, obviously not everything individually. Some of them had to be scalable ways to get information. But I joined multiple discovery techniques to understand all of the problem. And with a very small group that was able to cross-pollinate the practices that we created, we were able to achieve a very good outcome where we went from about 48% to over 90% of teams doing the reviews, registering them for offline consumption, and actually starting to engage with uh, stakeholders. And one of the hardest parts I had to do was actually gain the courage to call out stakeholders. They need to be there and they need to be accountable. If people are asking for their present, presence, sorry, they need to either say why they're not going to be there, but they need to commit to giving an answer to queries that are made to them. So this was a big journey 
to change and it's actually ending up with a very straightforward communication and we're managing to concatenate 60 reviews into one email that is scalable instead of that's one other problem that we had that I forgot to mention that was every team was sending an individual email, the ones that were doing. So even if it was half of them, people, the entire organization was getting 30 emails about sprint reviews, which is a bit overwhelming. And probably 15 every week, right? Because the reviews don't always happen at the same time. Here, uh, since we are working in a safe-like approach, the cadence is synced. And since the cadence is synced, That was more or less synced as well. Within, I would say they were getting the 30 emails within a five-day span between maybe Friday and Wednesday. So as I think through this, I'm thinking, okay, so from a a change leadership, of course, first thing is always understand the problem at different levels of depth, which we already illustrated quite clearly on the Monday episode with your story. Then work with a small group to kind of define, okay, so what are we going to try next and roll it out? And uh, one of the things that you mentioned, which definitely is worth highlighting again, is having the courage to call on stakeholders to make their own change instead of just relying on the teams to do things, but to look at it as an organizational change process. What did I miss in the approach, the tools, the techniques you used during this process? I don't think you missed it. The the overall, overall, that's it. Very good discovery. And the, the biggest learning I can share from this is that actually a very good discovery can lead to very good solutions. We don't need to do from this, I'm not suggesting that we do an agile coaching waterfall, which is uh, something that I use really say when we see the Scrum Masters or agile coaches trying to understand the problem 100% before moving up and committing to a possible solution and iterating over set solution. What I'm saying is, that you need to address this complexity with as much simplicity as you can, however, without forgetting the multiple scopes or the multiple sides to the problem. And it's put your practices and your actions where you actually, it's it's walking the walk, not just talking the talk. So if we apply the values and the behaviors that we, between quotes, preach, we'll be able to actually get to good outcomes. Yeah, I mean, we must be agile about the change process ourselves if we want the change process to lead into a more agile organization, right? Yes, but not only that. One other thing that I would strongly recommend, which is having, I don't like to use the word mindset, but it's uh, it's the, 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 the statement that is coined, so I'll use it. It's having that scout mindset about understanding a problem, being agnostic to a solution, listening to understand instead of listening to reply, and actually learning to understand the problem instead of learning with the goal to change. It's about confronting our own biases and understanding that there might be a solution out there that is not the one that we thought it would be. Absolutely. Be ready to be surprised. Thank you for sharing that, Luis. Thank you, Vasco. Hey friends, it's Vasco again, now with a bit longer announcement. I'm part of the team that is behind the global Scrum Master Summit, the conference dedicated to the Scrum Master role. If you're a Scrum Master, the Scrum Master Summit is a place to learn, to share, and of course, to meet new friends. We will have lots of live sessions where you can meet and network with other Scrum Masters from the whole globe. So make sure you check it at bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. We have several amazing key notes and seven tracks that feature people like you and of course thought leaders sharing their insights their knowledge and helping you become an awesome scrum master you can check out all of the details of the summit including the keynotes announced the track chairs and much more at bit.ly forward slash sm summit 22 that's all one word that's bit.ly forward slash sm s-u-m-m-i-t and the numeral 2-2 i'll see you on the conference floor